Uh, Mike Jarris, as he said, um, been working on FreeSwitch for a long time, and we've uh, started this uh, company called SignalWire, and SignalWire aims to bring um, all of these tools that we've brought to you in the open source, but uh, in very easy to consume, uh, easy to use ways. And one of the problems that uh, we've been working on solving is uh, Everyone's used to making phone calls, but having access to make phone calls um, from the web, WebRTC has brought us that. Um, it's always been a little bit difficult uh, to kind of get going and have that accessible. Um, and uh, WebRTC clients have tended to solve that problem, but uh, the next step is how do I uh, bring those sorts of capabilities to mobile as well? Um, so we have a, uh, an SDK for WebRTC, and we've uh, enabled it with uh, React Native in order to bring the same sorts of capabilities to mobile. Um, so, uh, Edo, would, do you mind uh, doing a, a, a quick show through about uh, how easy it is to build the uh, the React Native uh, client into an application for uh, your mobile device? Oh, yes, of course. So, um, using the, our JS SDK, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It's the same, uh, basically the same from JS and React uh, Native. Uh, you can just build up uh, your client use your pro your project and uh, the jwt and uh, set up your listener when the client is ready so attach your event like in all the other sdk you can catch the errors if uh, something something happened and then connect the client you you can uh, also uh, use i servers in like to to use um, to use turn and start servers, of course. And um, when the client is ready, you can attach also all the listener for, to, to handle the notification from the, the SDK. So changing when the, the, the calls come in or uh, the calls ringing or the notifications for um, to get the, the remote participant name or, uh, or number. Uh, this is the very basic uh, example to to make a call, an outbound call, to a destination number uh, using the, the front camera of uh, the device. This is an example uh, for the JS SDK. And here we can see another example uh, for the JS instead. And it's pretty the same. So you can create your client using project and token and then attach your listener uh, for the error and uh, listener for the message from the socket do, uh, do you want are, when, when the client is ready and stuff like that are you, are you, so trying, we to can, screen, are you trying to screen share or yeah you're not screen sharing right now those yep Okay, one sec. Okay, do you see right now? No, I don't. Mike, do you see? No. Nope. Okay, why, 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 why? And oh. do you see something with the screen share? No. Okay, one sec. Give me one sec. You are currently the only person in this conference. <laughs>
Okay, do you see now? Yes. Okay, great. So, uh, like uh, like I said earlier, you can very uh, easy uh, set up a client just doing new relay and you have your client set up using your project from the single web space and token that is a JWT. Uh, attach your listener when the client is ready or when the client raises an error and also um, handle all the notification from the client like a call update and uh, user media error if the, the browser or devices uh, raise an error for the webcam or microphone or microphone set up the stun and enter servers and the listener for all the socket messages like open close message and so on connect your client to to establish your session with uh, with relay uh, this is a very s example, simple example to um, uh, start a call with a destination number and uh, using the front camera of the, of the device. You have uh, all the other methods like NGAP uh, and uh, turn off the, micro the microphone, turn on the, um, the webcam and stuff like that. So, uh, um, this is the example of the React Native uh, application, so very easy, like we said, and this is the HTML file for the, the browser version of the application, so the same, you can create your client, uh, enable, enable microphone or disable uh, uh, the same for microphone and webcam, uh, attach your listener from the ready and close for the socket, connect your client and then uh, handle for all the, the call state changes like create, trying, recovering, ringing, uh, and then make a call. Very, very easy, just like for the React Native destination number, using the video or, uh, or not, using the audio or not. And so we can, we can try to make a call. You want me to call you or you to call me? Oh, uh, you can make a call using your resource and calling Eduardo. Okay. So we're gonna switch windows. Where am I? Let's get this out of full screen. All right, so we're gonna call Eduardo. Okay. It's not working, folks. Bear with me. I'm using the local client, so it's not cooperating. Um, do you wanna try calling Mike? Yeah. You got the call? Uh, of course it's failing. Um, do you uh, do you have a web client up uh, that I can point to? I'm pointing to the local version and it's uh, hitting permission issues. Oh. No, but I can. I can do this <clears throat> this demo. Just calling. I can make a call between the browser and React Native. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, wait a sec. So let's change this JWT.
Um, right here, Eduardo. And right there. is not reaching my client because here I use another here I use another GWT Let's see with two different browsers, Mike. One in Chrome and one in Firefox. Okay, pick up the call. And right now I'm calling between Eduardo on the left, that is calling Helena on the right. So are you are you seeing? Yeah. Mike? Absolutely. Okay. I see uh, I I heard myself multiple times, so I just hang up. Hang up. So uh, right now I can do this stuff in the simulator. I just have to create another GWT just using uh, well mic. Let's create a GWT with mic. Here. Replace the JWT. Okay, then from Eduardo, I can make a call on the simulator. Okay, so we have Mike on the simulator, Elena on Firefox, and Eduardo on Chrome, and I can call Mike. Inbound call from Eduardo, I can pick up and iOS. And okay, I I hear myself multiple times. Yep, that's that's Mike. Awesome. Do you see? Yep, we do. Okay. I can mute, mute the microphone, I can mute my camera, and uh, all, I, can mute the, I can enable the speaker in, uh, in the React Native stuff, and then hang up. So, so the thing to note here is you saw on the fly he uh, created a token for a new resource. So you have uh, API tokens that you configure in the UI and then use a REST interface, you can create tokens for different resources completely on the fly. So it's essentially creating users on the fly. You saw he just grabbed that token, dropped it into his build for that client, and just ran, and uh, that, that worked right off. So super easy, super quick to get up and running, and then as far as functionality from there, um, ton, tons of, uh, tons of possibilities, and, and this is all React uh, Native, so it's essentially web programming to create uh, uh, mobile applications. Uh, means that you can create the same application uh, 
with, with customized UIs for uh, both your web interface and your mobile experience, all the same uh, skills uh, needed to create your web is the same to create your mobile, so you don't have to have different teams working in all of these. It's uh, the same SDK, same base code, uh, same concepts uh, deliver to mobile or to web. So uh, it's pretty, pretty awesome technology. Any questions for Mike or Eduardo? Is this based on Plan B or Unified Plan, or do you let the user choose? Um, this currently, I think this is using Plan B, but there's some Unified Plan support in there. Uh, I think the request is uh, is Plan B. I need to look at the React Native uh, what, uh, RTC. It is all Plan B? That's right. right. Ah. Yeah. We, um, both React Native and uh, the JS SDK is Plan B right now. Other questions? One I have, uh, Mike and Eduardo, is uh, when working with React Native, of course, you're trying to use the same code base for multiple UIs. Have you have you run into any differences, uh, different experiences between, say, Android and iOS and how calls are received or in how you've had to structure things? Did you catch that, Edo? Uh, are there, have you run into differences between Android and iOS as far as how call handling works with uh, the React Native experience? Uh, well, the the difference is not uh, is not on the uh, on the WebRTC side of things, but basically, uh, mainly is on the native side because uh, well, you know, uh, on iOS you can integrate with uh, CallKit, uh, and uh, there are some other aspect of the development in the application like push notification. Uh, you have to handle. Um, your application to wake up the phone when the call, when when a calls come in and you can do this only using the ios package like call Keep, or uh, using um, google cloud notification for android so there are no difference in the webrtc side and the, in the webrtc layer but is uh, on the uh, system operator layer so the difference are um, in, in iOS versus Android, not in the WebRTC API. And the other consideration is always going to be um, not so much OS, but screen real estate, what the experience is on mobile is going to be different than the web. Um, so in addition to using kind of native elements in the app, also there's a challenge of thinking how you want the experience for the user. I'm, on my browser screen, it's much more real estate. So a multi-user conference may work better, but on a mobile screen, maybe looking at one person at a time may, may be a different kind of experience. So um, how you build your applications changes based on you know, experience and, uh, that you're looking for in screen real estate and kind of what's native to that platform. Versus what? Uh, doing it directly natively using Swift in iOS or Objective C. Uh, Edo, have you done any uh, profiling of React Native uh, versus uh, totally native applications uh, on, say, iOS or Android? Oh, no. 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 I, I do not. The, the core piece that's doing the major processing is the WebRTC component, which is a native component. 
So yes. um, the the actual UI pieces of it ends, ends up being a small portion of it. So I, I wouldn't expect it to be significant. Um, the main processing is all the video components. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much, Mike and Eduardo, for your presentation and for uh, always taking the risk of a live demo. We always appreciate the courage around that, uh, but it was very interesting. Thank